The Antichrist is already here. Catholics don't admit it. Intellectuals don't believe. How are you, dear friends of the work of God? Today we touch on a subject that makes your hair stand on end. The dreaded Antichrist is with us, but few have detected him. His coming has been very blurry because we didn't imagine it. We always had the hope that it would not be in our time. After all, it is the product of the father of lies that comes to destroy. The same happened with the coming of Christ. Only the little shepherds who were announced by the angels that the Lord and also the Magi, who even being pagans of the East, had the illumination of the Holy Spirit, to perceive the arrival of the Messiah. The Jewish priests, as well as the scribes, passed unnoticed the event of the arrival of the awaited Messiah because they did not have discernment, because they closed the doors of the Holy Spirit and did not deserve to enjoy this wonderful and unique event of the incarnation of the eternal world, the birth of the Messiah promised for thousands of years since the time of Moses and predicted 700 years before his birth by the prophet Isaiah. God does things quietly, and great events occur in the midst of God's humility. Many know that the Antichrist is coming because he has been prophesied in the Holy Scriptures, but they have not detected the signs because of lack of interest in the things of God, for being pending of prophecies and messages, for listening to many human voices and closing their ears to the Spirit of God. The great majority of people who wish to explain the mysteries of these end times seek to make themselves popular with the sensationalism of the news, with biblical explanations that are insufficient with dates that never happen, with words and words that only bring confusion. First of John 2, verses 18 and 22. Little children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is about to come, I tell you now that many have become Antichrists, by which we know that this is the last hour. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is Christ? That is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. St. John affirms that this is the last hour, and he refers to our time too, affirming that the Antichrist is about to arrive. Then he says that many have become Antichrists, which confirms that this is the last hour. He describes the Antichrist as any man who denies that Jesus is Christ, that is, who denies the Father and the Son. Of course, the Antichrist also manifests himself as a spirit, just as Christ being man is also God in spirit. Satan, being an evil spirit, manifests himself with the spirit of the light that influences and takes possession of the souls of men. With respect to this denial of Christ as the only way, truth, and life, we have Antichrists who speak of universal religions, of global fraternity, of a religion where Christ is no longer the way to the Father, of acceptance of all the religions through ecumenism. All this is the spirit of the Antichrist, who with ambiguity sows the light, but who has seen him. We all assume that he is a tyrannical man who will rule the nations as Antichrist against God and will pretend to be Christ. That is to say, he will deceive us. What if we concentrate on the Holy Scriptures that guarantee us that the man of lawlessness, the traitor, will sit in the holy place, just as Judas did, who was at the table of the Lord? We are far from the truth if we continue to wait and do not interpret the signs that have already manifested themselves. Matthew 24, verse 15. So, when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken through by the prophet Daniel, 
let the reader understand. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. Matthew 24, verse 21. For then there will be a great distress unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equal again. Here the prophet Daniel referred to the abomination in the holy place, which is already in force since the consecration of the Pachamama as pagan goddess accepted in the church. Abomination of desolation with the acceptance of sin in the encyclical Amor Leticia. Abomination of desolation with the encyclical La Darosi that worships Mother Earth. Abomination of desolation with the encyclical Fratelli Tutti that promotes Freemasonry. Human fraternity that denies Jesus as Christ because he promises us brotherhood outside the blood of Christ, which is a union with the devil, not with God, thus teaching a religion different from the one Jesus left us, a new religion that preaches false mercy and exalts man, allowing him to sin. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for before the second coming of Christ shall come a great apostasy. And the man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, even to the point of sitting in the temple of God and of proclaiming himself God. Apostasy is the lack of faith. It is the denial, renunciation, or abjuration of faith in a religion. That is exactly what has happened in our Catholic Church. The prophecy of St. Paul is already fulfilled. Today we have priests who have no faith. They do not understand that God comes to the altar in the form of consecrated bread. And that is why they wear masks and distribute communion in the hand and allow other hands to deliver it to the faithful. There are groups of priests in favor of homosexuality, and there is much permissiveness that comes from above. Who am I to judge? Or the same in other words, who am I, man, without faith? I cannot judge be between good and evil, and yet I am at the head. Of the Antichrist, it is said that he is the man of lawlessness, the same as Jesus said of Judas. This is a man who sits in the holy place and proclaims himself to be God. The suppression of the sixth commandment, although in an ambiguous way, already happened in the Catholic Church, so much so that from about seven years ago until now, homosexuals are delighting in profaning our religion, being accepted due to documents that give them credit in the midst of false mercy. Protestants receive the Holy Eucharist. Divorced and remarried couples receive the sacraments without having the sacred absolution. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 5 St. Paul tells us, Do you not remember that while he was among you, he told you these things? And now you know what is in store for him, the Antichrist, until the time comes for him to be made manifest. For the mystery of iniquity is already at work. It only remains for him who holds him back to be put away. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth, destroying him with the splendor of his coming. Many claim that the one who holds back the mystery of lawlessness may be Pope Benedict XVI, who have embraced 94 years of age does not, expect, does not expect a long life to hold back the Antichrist. But the true spiritual interpretation of this passage is that Christ himself is the one who retains the mystery of iniquity. Christ is being vanished from many churches that are already empty and from many places where a faithless rite is performed. So when the perpetual sacrifice ceases, which has been interrupted in our days as never before, then the wicked false prophet and antichrist will be manifested 
with perfect clarity. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 9, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the light and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth, and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion, so that they will believe the lie, and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. Those who have not been able to decipher the puzzles of the Holy Scriptures regarding the Antichrist should remember that Jesus warns us in Matthew 7, verse 15, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. The wolf wears the same clothing as sheep. He gets into the flock. He looks as white or even wider than they do. On the one hand, he carefully follows religion. He's a great actor, who for many dumb sheep is impeccable, disguised as a saint. But on the other hand, he gathers at the table with men of iniquity to bring about the destruction of the church, the body of Christ, and tells people to obey what the United Nations say, not what God says. Let us see how God appreciates the man who does not mix with the wicked. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who does not follow the counsel of the wicked, nor dwell in the path of sinners, nor cultivate the friendship of blasphemers. Conclusion. The Antichrist is already with us. If you cannot see him or hear him, then you have eyes and ears that neither see nor hear. Jeremiah 5, verse 21, hears these of foolish and senseless people, who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Now more than ever, we must pray much for our Catholic Church that is already dissolving into a new religion that is not the religion of Jesus Christ. Let us pray very much for the priests and bishops who wash their hands continually and have turned the deaf ear and follow the voices that promote apostasy. They have not cared about the blasphemy against God and the Virgin Mary, nor the heresies of the false prophet, nor the idolatry that has some abomination profane the holy place with the Tasha Mama, nor the ambiguous changes to the law of God with the encyclicals of this papacy nor the profanation and sacrilege that is being committed with the forced Eucharist in the hand and the priestly mask at the altar of the ministers who do not believe that God comes to the altar. They give more credit to the virus to which they fear more than God. If you like this video, please give us a like. Subscribe to our channel, The Work of God. Share on social networks. And don't forget to leave your valuable comments. Please tell us, what are your beliefs about the Antichrist? God bless you.